Hey, good morning. This is Jelle from Growing Bonsai. And today we're going to be looking at pines and how to take cuttings of pines. No, not of more mature pines. I'm going to take cuttings of these little seedlings here. So in this video, I'm going to go through the whole process of taking pine cuttings. I'm going to plant them up. I'm going to get them to root. And then at the end of the season, I'll publish this video showing the whole process, including the rooted seedlings. Why do we take cuttings? of seedlings of pine. Because after all, they're seedlings, they have roots. We don't need to propagate them again, right? Well, there's a very good reason. Now, if you look at the pine, um, normally they will shoot out quite tall and the first one or two inches, five centimeters, will not have any leaves. There's no buds and nothing will grow there. Now that is fine for most situations, but if you want to create, for instance, a shohin bonsai, then you would want the roots to be as close to the needles as possible. That will allow you very low branches and that will create a better showing. Also, another thing that you'll see, if you pull out a pine seedling, there's only going to be one single root. If you take seedling cuttings, then you can get perfectly radial roots. Now I'm going to do it a little bit different from what you might see in other videos. I don't have a misting setup, so in my garden I need to work in a different way. And to be honest, it is a little bit of a trial. I'm also not going to use sand. What you see in other video is that they take a pot, they fill it with normal substrate, they wet the substrate, then they push something in the pot and fill a little hole with sand and use that sand to do cuttings. I'm not going to do that. One of the things you need, of course, are seedlings. These are the stars of the show. You can see these have started to grow. They have the first rosette of needles and in the middle you see the first real growth coming out as well. Next to this, you see that the stem has gone from green to purple. This one is still a little bit green, but here you very clearly have a purple tone. This is the perfect time for the cuttings to be taken and to be rooted. I have prepared a pot here with my normal regular substrate. I'm going to put a layer of maybe two and a half centimeters, one inch of vermiculite in there. I have that here. And then I'm going to fill it up with water Get the vermiculite to settle, punch holes in there, plant the seedling cutting in there. Now, important, when you're doing seedling cuttings, you use a sharp knife. This is a brand new carpet knife, never been used. Next to this, I use a rooting hormone. Um, it's a jelly type hormone, and I just put a little bit on the tray so I can immediately dip the cutting after cutting it off the main stem. As said, I'm using a very sharp cutting knife, disinfected, and I use a little wooden block to cut the cutting on. This is not because I'm going to exert a lot of pressure, it is just so I don't blunt the knife too quickly when I'm taking my cuttings. Now to make sure that the cuttings, after I've cut them and I've dipped them in the rooting hormone, keep the hormone on there. First of all, I'm going to cut the cuttings, leave them sit for a little bit, but after that, I still don't want to slide the rooting hormone off. And what I'm going to do therefore is punch a bunch of holes in the substrate. Now I'm going to make 10 cuttings. So I'm also putting 10 holes in there for each cutting one. Quite simple, right? So make the holes large enough and deep enough for the cutting to fit. Um, the cuttings are going to be about one and a half centimeters, maybe half an inch long. So that's what I need. The rest of the seedlings I'm just going to leave in this tray over summer. So in spare fall we can compare them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's organize this a little bit. This is the last step. First step is the cutting, second step is the dipping, third step is the planting. And let's get some of these seedlings out. So I'm using a little stick. Um, I'm not just pulling them out because I don't want to damage anything. So I'm just going to gently push this in and then bring the seedling up. And when I see it move, I can gently start bringing it out. So as said before, there's only one main root. It is nice and purple. And this is now ready to become a cutting. Um, important is, well, first of all, you need to decide where to cut. As said, I wanted to go for about one, one and a half centimeter, so that's roughly there. Look what you gain, gain. If I cut it here, all this is stem 
that I'm losing. Now second of all, let the knife do the work. So don't push down. No, you just gently let the knife connect to the cutting and slide it over. And that way you separate the cutting from the roots. Now you have a cutting, straight away dip it in the rooting hormone. If you have something like dip and grow, which is a liquid rooting hormone that also works and you can just drop it in, I don't. Um, so also I'm not leaving it out too long, but I'm putting it aside. I of course do this out of the wind and out of the sun, so they don't dry out too much. Now let's do this again and I'll give you a bit of a close up. So once again, push the chopstick underneath or another piece of wood, lift them so they disconnect a little bit from the substrate and then gently pull it out, just like that. And then take the cutting, take your knife, push it down onto the wood and let the knife cut through the cutting. And straight away, take the cutting and dip it into the rooting hormone, making sure some of it sticks and let it work for a bit. So the downside of recording a video is that it always takes a bit of time and now the sun has come up. So the setup that I had, which was nice in the shade, is now in the sun. Um, basically I'm just dropping these seedlings into the hole and this, the substrate can go all the way up to the existing needles, just like that. And then of course, gently close the substrate around the cutting. I will, at the end, water them down, which will further close the holes. But this is pretty much the process. This I'm going to do now another eight times, and then I have this one filled. After taking all the cuttings and watering them down in the pot, because I don't have a misting setup, I'm going to plant them in my Ziploc baggies. Just like that. And leave them in semi shade. Make sure they don't get too hot. And in a couple of weeks, we'll check whether they've started to regrow again. Now will you look at these cuttings, look at what we are taking off. This is all stem material that we now don't have on our plants. And these, they go back in the sun, fertilized, let them grow for the season. It's about the longest day, three weeks since I planted these up. And I know something you don't know and it's really, really cool. Look at that. And no, I don't mean the weed that is popping up here. But doesn't that look like a healthy crop of cuttings? And in fact, if you ask me, they've grown. I'm not gonna pull this, just like that. That's also gone. Look at that. I think another two or three weeks to be sure that these are all growing and then I can start fertilizing a little bit. From now on, I'll leave the baggie open on top, but it needs to stay in the baggie for a little bit longer. But this is really, really great. So second week of July, it's really, really, really hot. In fact, they're predicting mid 30, so that is the high 90s today. And I thought it was time to have a quick look. As you can tell, these seedlings have grown quite considerably. So I'm thinking that also my cuttings need to have started to root. And best is of course to just leave them alone until spring and in spring only pull them out and see whether they can be repotted and see which ones rooted. But you know what? Video 
I want to show you something as well as it happens, otherwise it's just, yeah, well, a year ago this is what I did and now they look like that. So I'm going to pull one of them out and see what the roots look like, whether they started the roots and what roots are there. This is not a recommendation, of course. This is something I do for the video and you should basically wait until fall or early spring, then look at the roots and pull them out. There's enough space between them so they can quite easily grow for another season. You can tell they have started to push growth, so I'm quite certain they have rooted. So let's take a look. I'll take this one. This is between two and takes up a bit of space. I'm just going to gently lift the substrate and see what comes out. Let's hope there's roots. Ha! Look at that. That's nice roots from all sides. Nice and long. I'm going to pot these up in a separate pot. This is one rooted seedling cutting. Right. Well rooted and therefore a little bit of fertilizer and this is just organics and they will fall apart over the rest of the season. And really if you look at these cuttings and you compare them to the non-cutted seedlings, they're actually, these are not all that much bigger. They are a little bit bigger, but these are not far behind. This pot of course, I'm not going to leave completely open. I'm just going to half close it, sink the pot back in and just leave it like this for a week or two so the air can slowly start to dry out. The seedlings will get used to drier air and they'll rely more on the roots. This I'm going to put in semi-shade for two weeks and then it's going into full sun and this is going back into full sun. Right, it is now early August. The cuttings are doing really, really well. As you may, noticed, as you may have noticed, two of them have in fact died. The one that I pulled out earlier is doing quite well. It has fallen over but it has righted itself again. So it's a nice little curve on there. And the ones that I did not remove or did not replant, um, you can tell there's a little side branch growing there, there's a side branch there, there's a side branch there. These are actually now steaming off. These have tiny little buds that they might create some side branches. Still, if you look at a plant like this, it is over an inch tall. This is not doing poorly. Oh, hello. I've got a little caterpillar sitting here. That's not a good idea. Let's remove that one. Don't know if you can even see it that small. And I think with that, we are done. These have rooted. I lost two out of 10 seedlings. The one that I replanted earlier is doing fine. It's growing well. Needs a bit more fertilizer probably to catch up. And the ones that I actually left in place in the seeding tray all are doing quite well. So what's stopping you? Go get some Japanese black pine seeds, plant them in fall, wait for spring and do your seedling cuttings. This was Jelle, growing bonsai on seedling cuttings of black pine. See you next time. Keep growing bonsai.